past failures. I tried business once, I failed. I tried again, I failed. I threw in the towel. I went for an interview, they didn't pick me. I went to another one, I did a dozen times, I threw in the towel. I tried to lose weight. My God, God knows I tried. I gave it a week, another one, another one. Nothing worked. Oh, come on. Let me eat. Let me live. God knows I tried. Past failures. I have met people. 20 years later, this week alone, a couple wrote to me. I receive a lot of messages from people, different corners of the world. Can you imagine a couple writing to me? They're in their late 30s and telling me, Doc, we are orphans. Do you know, I just felt like telling them, shame on you. If they are orphans, even Joe Biden is an orphan. If you're in your 30s and 40s, you're not an orphan. Orphans are kids. Many of us have lost our parents. Get out of that place. We don't have that year olds who are orphans, 40 year olds who are orphans. Ah, I lost my mom, I lost my dad. Maybe you were an orphan, but you're not an orphan now. Somebody broke your heart five years ago. So what? Do you know how many people's hearts are broken? Would you want me to come with statistics next week? The point remains, every human being fails. We fail from time to time, not if you fail. But when you fail, what will you do? I can't wait to teach this lesson about failures. It's my favorite. But let me tell you what the Bible tells you to do when you fail, not if you fail. When you fall, when you fail. Proverbs 24, 16. The godly man may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. That's NLT version. Now, NIV says, though the righteous may fail seven times, they rise up again. They fall, but they rise up. They fall, but they rise up. The reason I selected NLT for our study today, I like the fact that it is not even falling. It's just tripping. It's just tripping. Don't dwell on your pity party. I know it's okay. You know, if you go through a tragic divorce for three, six months, that's okay. That's understandable. Don't speak about it five years later. When you lose a loved one, one of my most painful experiences is to lose my sister Lydia three months to her wedding. And to be honest, for a couple of weeks, that was tough. Ask this lady here, Mercy. The day Lydia died, the lady I loved the most among all my relatives, I was still speaking that particular day. I had a speaking engagement and I didn't cancel it. I still spoke for two hours. You know, I had a choice to make, either to resurrect her or to go and serve the people who had waited for me in that conference. It's a painful experience, and I'm quoting it to tell you we all go through these things. Let me tell you, dear ones, beloved children of God, 100% of the people you know have lost loved ones. Please understand this. The probabilities are clear. One out of one of every human being dies. One out of one. There's no going around it. So don't go berserk when you lose your loved one. We all lose our loved ones. Any relationship can break any time. There is no marriage beyond breaking point. There is no business beyond collapse. There is nobody who cannot be admitted in hospital. Even those who write books on positive living and positive confession, they can positively be on a hospital bed. Am I making sense? What's the message? We all fail. We all fall from time to time. The Bible says when you do that, rise up again. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. If you don't deal with that, you will take the same issues to your next relationships. Deal with it, get up, move on. We all fail from time to time. Not if you fall, but when you fall. When? 
It will happen. Even the most successful, from time to time, they fail. Let me just remind you, not so long ago, you remember early this year, Bill and Melinda Gates, I say with a lot of respect, a couple we admire, they had to divorce. So look, one success is followed by another loss. That's the nature of the human life. We don't always get it right. Number eight, 